It's right down here. All right, so you have an electric tank type water heater. This is a glass line steel tank, and you're not alone. About 40% of American houses have some version of this electric water heater. You can see cold water comes in right here. The heated water leaves right here to go out to the faucets. Here's your electrical wire that sends about 240 volts into the tank. And the way the water's heated is using these elements like this. This is very similar to what you'd see in a toaster oven, but this is much heavier and it really uses a lot of power. This is 4,500 watts. And when these are on, your electric meter spins. So there's an element down here that sits behind this cover right here. And another one at the top of the tank that goes right here. So what do you have for fuels in this house? Heating oil for the furnace okay. and no natural gas. Okay, so we're going to have to stay with electricity to heat the water, but what I want to do is I want to switch it from using these elements to superheat the water to using a thing called a heat pump. Now a heat pump will actually take the heat that's in the air in the basement and move it into the water heater. Now the most popular heat pump water heater is all in one. It's a glass line steel tank at the bottom and on the top is the heat pump unit and that'll move that heat into the water beautifully. They're really efficient and actually they'll dehumidify your basement as well. If there's anything I don't like though, is that someday the glass line steel tank is gonna fail. And when it does, not only is the tank gone, but so is the heat pump unit itself. You gotta replace the whole unit. Recently I've seen a technology that's pretty different. Let me show you. All right, so here is your new heat pump. It's a separate unit, not mounted on top of the tank. And it allows us to actually reuse your existing water heater. Now down here at the bottom of your water heater, there's a thermostat right behind this cover. Normally it brings on the electrical element I showed you before. Now it's going to wire to the heat pump. And when it does, it'll bring on a circulator pump which will pull water out of the bottom of the water heater through the heat pump. The water will get heated and pumped back to the water heater. Now this thing is nothing but a glorified air conditioner in reverse. If I had an air conditioner right here in the window and I turned it on, the heat that was in the air would be absorbed into the refrigerant right here and then the heat would be dumped to outside leaving cold air you can feel. Well this just reverses it. We have the air that's heated right here. It'll pull it into right here. Instead of dumping to outside, we're going to dump it into a small pipe right here, move that heat right into the water heater and heat the water. All right, let's get started. All right. We'll shut the cold water feed for the water heater, turn the breaker off of the electrical panel, and we use a pump to drain all the water out of the tank. And it's a good idea to open a hot water faucet to break the vacuum in the tank. All right, so all the water is drained out of our water heater. Now we're going to make the water connections. But we're not going to do it up here where you think we might, where the cold and the hot connect. We're actually going to do it down here. We're going to take out this drawer off, this drain valve. We're going to install this. It's a special fitting, a pipe in a pipe, a single entry valve. Now water from the water heater will be pulled through this larger pipe. It'll go out through here and it'll go to the heat pump that'll sit right here. Once it's heated, it'll come back right here, and it can come down through here and inject right through this blue pipe right into the bottom of the tank. So it actually is a single entry with two pipes. And we'll still have a drain valve here for service. That's great. Okay, now we just thread the new piece in. run the water to and from the heat pump, we're going to use plastic piping called PEX. All right, so in the front cover that sits here normally, I've drilled a hole and I've installed a strain release. Now that's the perfect place for us to run this wire. Now this wire is going to run between the heat pump and the water heater right to this thermostat. It's going to bypass this element. So when the thermostat calls, it'll now bring on the heat pump. I'll make one connection with a wire nut. And for the other, I'll just tighten up a screw on this metal fork. All right, so we have refilled the water heater. We've got our electrical connections made. Breaker is back on at the panel. One more thing I want to show you here though. See this white thing down here? This is a condensate pump. Now anytime we run this heat pump, we're going to scavenge heat and it also has moisture, humidity in it. And it needs a place for that water or condensate to go. So it goes down to this pump 
there's a little float down here. Once the water level rises, pump comes on, and now it pumps that water up through this clear tube. You see it right here? And go right down through the washing machine drain right there. So we are ready to turn it on. You ready? All right. And now, after we heat up this tank initially, from then on, we're actually going to use the heat that's in the air in this room to heat the water. That's so cool, Richard. Thank you so much. We can't wait to start saving money on our electric bill. And save your will. All right. See ya. Thanks. Thanks.